Oh, look, Hilda. She's levitating right on schedule. Let's wake her up and tell her she's a witch. No, let her sleep. She starts a new school tomorrow. Besides, the first levitation is so special. Yeah, but then it gets old real quick. <laughs> Can't believe our little niece is growing up. Wait till Sabrina finds out what new doors this will open for her. Wait till she finds out you still get zits when you're 600 years old. <laughs> well, we better go before she wakes up. So sweet. So innocent. Just the perfect little witch. Ladies, gentlemen, talking cats, welcome to the very first episode of Sabrina's Witch Trials! Yay! Woo! My, my guest is excited, so I'm excited also. This is, of course, the podcast you've all been waiting for. Each week, me and a friend, we're going to get together, we're going to go back into the mid-90s, we're going to watch an episode of everybody's favorite Friday Night Spellfest, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and we're going to talk about it for you guys, in your ears, for probably 40 minutes. Maybe a little bit longer because I'm pretty long-winded, um, as you can tell. I'm Alex Araujo. If you know that name, I assume we went to high school together, maybe college. Maybe you saw this in my Facebook feed and were like, I listen to that, whatever. You, or you met some other guy who had the same name. Possibly. Um, I love Sabrina Teenage Witch. I loved it for 20 years now. Actually, it's exactly 20 years now, so go figure. Um exactly 20 years no more no less uh, maybe slightly less yes it's it premiered in September. yeah i'm gonna have to cut all this out uh, <laughs> why uh and i've really wanted to do a podcast about sabrina for the longest time it's such a great show such a very nostalgic show for so many people and i think it deserves to have people watch it and just mock the hell out of it for a, an extended period but of time. But in the nicest way. Sure, like, lovingly. Mock it with love. Lovingly. Like, like a parent does to her, <laughs> to her child who like, disappoints them. Like our mother does to us. <laughs> Good thing she can't work podcast feeds or else we'd be, we'd be dead. Uh, as you might have guessed for this first episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I've brought on uh, somebody who I've known for quite a long time and who is actually, in, in no small way, the reason for why I like Sabrina the Teenage Witch so much uh, she's my sister. She's also the media maven over at chrisconquers.com. Uh, Christina Adoju, Chris Adoju is here. She's, she's trying to be all street, so she shut, oh, yeah. she shut her name down. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. what's that movie where um, that white girl teaches uh, all the black kids how to dance? I don't know. You, you know what I'm talking about, that right? No, I honestly have no idea. Somebody listening to, to this dance? Is, yeah, I don't know. Are you sure you're thinking of the right movie? I think I am. Wait, are you thinking no, no, of like... It's actually... No, it's not black guys. She teaches like a white guy from the streets how to dance. It's, it's the one with... It's the one with, with your, your boy. With, with the, Channing Tatum yeah, is not yeah. my boy, but okay. He's your boy. Um, you mean uh, Step In. Step In. With his wife. Right. That's, that's, his wife is the one that teaches him to dance. Oh. You're trying to step in to this podcast or to the world of blogging, which you've done quite well. Quite popular. I'm so confused as to how this analogy is working, but okay. It worked pretty well. Let's mm. not get ourselves. Okay. Um, Christina Adeluju, Chris Adeluju, as I said. I fucked it up twice. Uh, <laughs> she's here. Um, she is the reason why I like Sabrina. I definitely watched it because she was watching it all yep. those years ago. Every Friday. Chris, why don't you tell us why you like Sabrina so much? I mean, or like Sabrina so much? Honestly, I think... It was kind of like every girl's dream at the time. I mean, you get to be a witch. You get to conjure things. You you live with two kooky aunts who are actually really a lot of fun, even though, I mean, obviously, bummer. You don't get to live with your parents, but, like, you get awesome aunts. That and... is covered in this first episode really sadly. <laughs> yeah. And also, I mean, just little things about it, like... Of course, when you're like in elementary school, junior high, whatever, there's this aspirational thing like you always wanted to be those high school kids. Mm -hmm. 
the cool kid. You like it was it was always a thing where you're like, oh god, everything is gonna be so much cooler when I get to high school, yep. and so you sort I'm of watch my witch powers. <laughs> you dreamed that you would. Uh, I'm gonna get my witch powers. I'm gonna have that badass like four poster bed. Yeah. Uh, my friend's gonna be a loser with curly hair. I mean, who makes bad that, jokes. Those are the dreams <laughs> that you have. My cat will talk to me. Yep. So when I say snarky things, he'll say even snarkier things That's true. back. That like we said. Um, my cat doesn't talk, but she is a sassy bitch. She's the sassiest fucking so, bitch. So, I'm Seriously. connected to the show in that way also. Yeah, and yeah. and then you have, you know, there is that romance element that she's going to high school. She's got, you know, Harvey, the fucking dream boat, mm-hmm. uh, who's totally hanging around her. And she is the new girl. She's the awkward new girl who, on top of, you know, normal high school awkwardness, has which powers she's trying to learn to use so and come to terms with especially in this episode yeah did you ever walk into the closet and see if you could go to the other realm i did not i mean I, I'm, I mean i might have pretended that i could once or twice you know just for <laughs> I'm for fun like realm. come down to dinner <laughs> jeez but like honestly like that intro though was the best thing ever that though literally like i have this theory where tv intros are good every other decade because like mm-hmm. the 70s had really good tv intros the 90s had really good tv intros the 50s had some good tv intros but like the 2000s not really the 80s there might be some but there's not right. a lot so we have like good tv intros now no because that kind of lets my theory down but maybe like in 2019 we're just gonna get like 50 of them and i'll be proven right game of thrones is good game of thrones is actually very good so, as I said, each week we're going to watch an episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. We're going to review it. We're going to mock the hell out of it. It's going to be a real fun time. Different guests each week. I'm lucky enough to have Chris here this week. Yeah. To cover episode one, Pilot. Quite the uh, special name there. Um, before we get into the actual episode, though, I want to give people some setting material about Sabrina the Teenage Witch as a show. Because as a lot of people might know, some... People might not. I didn't know for the longest time. It was actually a spinoff of a TV movie that was produced that same year in 1996. It was a TV movie? It was a TV movie made for Showtime. I thought it was a movie movie. Nope. Like Theaters? Yeah, well, because you, th- you have to remember, this was in the days of Blockbuster. Mm-hmm. So I think I saw it at a sleepover, and we got it from Blockbuster, and it was like, oh, we're going to watch this movie. Yep. We're going to watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which was, you know, awesome because... You were like nine. I mean, I already went over why it was awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See previous statement as to awesomeness. <laughs> About dreams of being a teenage witch that everyone had. Um, so, yeah, I never really realized it was I've actually never made seen for it. TV. Like, I never really wanted to because there's a lot of things that are different from it. But I want to give you guys just five quick fun facts. Five fun facts. Everybody likes alliteration, right? Yes. Good. That's what the world <laughs> yes, is. <laughs> definitely. There's no way they don't. Uh, five fun facts about the production behind the scenes from when we went from a movie to this new TV show. Uh, number one. Actually, you know what? You give me, give me a five count. So you say number one. Number one. Yes. Uh, of course, the show was created based off the success of the movie. Some things were actually held over from the movie. Of course, Melissa Joan Hart played Sabrina in the film. She played Sabrina on the show. One other actor was held over. Miss Michelle Bowden, who plays Jenny on the show, she did play Marnie in the movie. Same basic character, just a weird name change. I think it was for the better. It's just a more 90s name. Mm-hmm. Marnie's more she of like... She always seemed kind of like she didn't really fit in the show. Like, she always seemed like a like a character who... Was tacked on? Not really tacked on, but like she seemed more developed as a human being than the rest of these characters in a way. Yeah. Well, th- I think that's the whole thing. She's supposed to be that, like, awkward... She's not a theater kid, but that awkward theater kid. Mm-hmm. Or I guess the awkward uh, English major who's right. just, like, so much more mature than everyone their age and, you know, gets their view of the world from books or from, I don't know, it's something else mature-ass music. Perhaps. I don't know. And, and yeah, is just not into the that high school life yeah you want to say life i was gonna say drama but it works um same difference give me a two chris two 
Now, a lot of stuff was, of course, changed from the movie. Uh, in fact, the name of the town where Sabrina lives was changed from Riverdale to Westbridge. That's weird because none of those are actually quite right with the comics. Because, of course, Sabrina Teenage Witch is from an Archie Comics comic book. Uh, Does an Archie she... live in Riverdale? Archie lives in Riverdale and she lives in a adjoining town whose name I forget. Uh, of course, also in the movie and in the comic books, uh, Zelda was actually like the funny witch and Hilda was like the straight-laced witch. Hmm. They changed it over. And I, I, to be fair, like I think it, it was for the better because I really, really love Beth Broderick as Zelda. Not so much Caroline Ray as, as Hilda, but she got more annoying as time went by. But it ju it was just a name change. They just swapped the names. Yeah. It wasn't like the character, like the the actors were the same at all. So, no. it, it, but but it was Zelda was the straight Zelda yeah. was the weird witch. Hilda was the straight waist one. It's just a name change. It's a weird. It's like it's a weird thing to change. But I I grew up with it the other way. Someone so. was just like, no, Zelda sounds so much more scientific. Three. Melissa Joan Hart, however, wasn't the only actress considered for the role of Sabrina Teenage Witch. In fact, she wasn't even the only actress with three names considered for Sabrina Teenage Witch. Sarah Michelle Gellar. Sarah Michelle Gellar was considered, but she gave up the uh, gave up the possibility of the role in order to star as Buffy, which was probably Wise the right way to go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were both, you know, of the time, like, the badass girls you wanted to be, except Sabrina was more awkward. Yep. And Bill, but Buffy was semi awkward too. It was just in a different way. Yeah, but the thing is, like, she was awkward and yet, like, super popular. It was weird yeah. watching that show. Well, because she was, like, a total cheerleader. What was also weird was that apparently, like, in 2006, when they were considering making another Sabrina movie, Sarah Michelle Geller was also considered for the role, even though at that point she was almost 30 years old. And Sarah Michelle. Uh, and Melissa Joan Hart had already been in the first one. Yeah, for like seven so years. So they were the gonna... show was over by that point. They were still considering getting her. That's to so play fucked Sabrina up. Teenage. They just really what wanted the hell? Sarah Michelle Geller. God. Four. Despite the show's title, Melissa Joan Hart was actually twenty when the show premiered. Because of course she had already been Clarissa. She looked young though. She did, although by like season two, she, it's like. She's already got, like, facial hair and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell she's a young man. Don't say that. <laughs> no, she's a, she's a handsome woman. Uh, she, she was did. actually just barely 19 when the movie premiered. Like, the movie premiered, like, four days before her birthday or something. Like, a week or so. So she, she was teenage. She's 19 age. That counts. I mean, Sabrina the 19 age witch. <laughs> she wasn't 16, but still. Yeah. Five? That's the number. Yeah, I, I was like... Five? Uh, Musa Joan Hart's mother, Paula Hart, actually served as the executive producer for not only the movie, but the show's entire run. So nepotism is what you're saying. Basically. She, like, kept an eye on Melissa Joan Hart and the production because apparently they are, like, really religious. So, um, you know, so that things didn't get too crazy or anything. Uh, and young stars. I mean. Fun fact. She also served as executive producer for Sabrina the Animated Series. Got she, a superstar cat. She served as executive producer for Melissa and Joey. So, nepotism. <laughs> so, she's a momager. And she served as executive producer for the breakthrough TV documentary, Tying the Knot, The Wedding of Melissa Joan Hart. That was a thing? That was like a documentary. They when made. was that? 2003, I believe. Can we watch that? We can probably find it and maybe do it as a special if people want to listen to it. Please, I want to see that. I okay. want to know, was there anything magical that happened? I don't even know. If was you... Salem there? Nick Piquet was probably invited. No, but was Salem there? <laughs> it was just a black cat <laughs> It was just an around. animatronic cat. I really hope Nick Piquet did the ceremony. He, he would have been so good. I feel like people that are um, young stars, like, just want to get the hell away from that stardom like in terms of anything that's cliche about it like mm -hmm. they want to get as far away from it as possible so i feel like <laughs> salem probably didn't officiate the wedding like i follow him on twitter for sabrina's witch trials at sabrina podcast on twitter plug 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 oh those are all coming at the end folks um and he's he's not only is he like really nice but he's right up front about it like i am best known for being the voice of a cat <laughs> okay 
Yeah, well, he did it so well. Like, there's no... He did it very well. He did it for a long time. You will hear his voice no matter where you are, and yep. you will know that he's Salem. Except for that one guy who's like, oh, I, he's from Till Death. And, like, everybody beats him up because, like, nobody watched Till Death. Nope. Brad Garrett watched Till Death. I like YouTube, Brad Garrett. <laughs> Listen to my show. <laughs> all right. Uh, with all that out of the way, let's get into the first episode of Sabrina Teenage Witch, Season 1, Episode 1, Pilot. Premiered on September 27th, 1996. A time when George Clooney was amazing everyone on ER. Bob Dole was falling off stages. <laughs> it's so mean. You never saw that video of Bob no. Dole fall off? Oh, it's, I'm going to show you that later. It's hilarious. He's, an old, he's still an old man, but it was funny as hell. Uh, and so, You know how I feel about old people. And 8.30 p.m. on a Friday night, Sabrina the Teenage Witch came on the air. That was a good time spot. Not anymore, but then... Yeah. It was the bee's knees of time spots. Well said. <laughs> Title of this episode bitches will be the bee's. It was the bitches britches of time spots. More confusing. Was that a thing? Is right. that is that a thing now? So Chris, if you had to summarize this episode in seven words exactly. Oh my god. What? Fun, is this a pop quiz? It's fun for me. Seven <laughs> words exactly. How would you describe this episode? Hmm. You're going to have to cut out so much of this long pause. Not a problem. Um, okay. Yeah. Eddie. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm a witch. Cat talks. Works perfectly. Yeah. That, that is basically right? it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go beat by beat through the episode, and we're going to talk about what we like and uh, what we really thought was really dumb and, you know, basically laugh at a lot of terrible fashion in the mid-90s. Start off, open, on a teenage girl's bedroom, asleep. <laughs> Somewhere in the world, Stephen Collins gets very excited. Oh my god, no, inappropriate. I've had that joke for like three inappropriate. months. Sitting around. Girl begins to float. It's Sabrina. It's her 16th birthday. In walk, her two kooky aunts, as Chris described them, yes. Hilda and Zelda. Zelda explains that on on Sabrina's 16th birthday... On Chris's, on Chris's 16th, 16th birthday. Yes, continue. On her 16th birthday, her magical powers come to light. And Hilda wants to tell her of her powers right away. But Zelda says, no, she's got school in the morning. She's starting a new school. Let her sleep. And the scene closes with her calling her the perfect little witch, which I thought was a little creepy. Uh, anything that well, because you would normally say like "perfect little angel," yeah, like "oh, look at how sweet she is," but she's a witch. So. It, was just, it was just like a weird way to end that scene. She's a sweet little witch. And then we go right into that awesome intro music. Meow, meow, meow. Just, just the best, just the best. Chris, anything to say about this specific exchange here with Hilda and Zelda? Um, not specifically about the exchange. Mm -hmm. Anything about Sabrina levitating? Hell yes! First <laughs> of all, what is with the like? sacrificial virgin victorian nightgown i know it's literally like right out of buffy the vampire slayer it's like the last time somebody bought a sleeping gown like that they bought it for like a nickel at the fucking five and dime i get it though like she lives in a victorian house and she's a witch and there are a lot of elements that are supposed to be like you know of a different time i mean you've got the stained glass windows in her room and the lava lamp on her bedside table. Of a different time. The early <laughs> 70s. But, but well, also of the 90s. Because some, oh, yeah. no. somehow every 20 years... Our brother had a lava lamp. Yep. And I was so jealous. Somehow <laughs> so every... Jealous. I was. I wish I was. I'm just, I'm just being honest here, okay? Uh, somehow every 20 years, like, fashion and things like that just repeat themselves. That's why, mm. like, now, n stuff from the 90s are, like, 90s-looking things. Like brown lipstick. Chokers. A platform shoes. Yep. They're just like all making a comeback. Crop tops. Mm -hmm. Clinton's as president. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that one. Um, Get that political shit in there. <laughs> Take some of that. So they're, they're all, they all make a comeback every 20 years. So it was a thing in the 90s, but it is kind of weird when you see it now. Yeah. Because you're just kind of like, what? The other odd bit is just like the notion of her like levitating when she gets her powers. Like, kind of felt to me like the witch equivalent of, like, getting your first period. Yep. Right? Yeah. Which, I can must, see that. but, like, ten times worse, because, like, you can't have a fucking ceiling fan. Can't have a ceiling fan. You can't have people sleep over. Right. 
And, and again, wearing wearing the white nightgown was like, ooh. But also, like, I was thinking about this. Is this supposed to be something that happens every night or just in the very beginning? I think it happens, well, because we see it happen twice in this episode. Yeah. So I think it's just like. She, like a period. She has her period. She has a week and then it's gone. Okay. All Le- right. Levitation is like a period. Boom. Show title. So many possible <laughs> show titles. We open the next day. Sabrina comes down the stairs holding Salem for some reason. We never saw him before, but she gives Salem to Hilda, and Zelda gives her a birthday present. It's a cauldron. Sabrina wants to put her pens in it. Hilda pulls the bitch card and is like, oh, that's my gift too. I just forgot to sign the card. Fuck you, Hilda. Get a proper gift. She has a party later. Just give it to her later, really. Like, get her something. It's it's in the mail. Uh, Amazon, which doesn't exist. uh, Taking a long time to ship it. It's a badass cauldron, though. It is a nice-sized cauldron. It's, like, the perfect size. Yeah. If you, if you like making soup for one, yeah, real nice. It's perfect. And Even it if look, you're not a witch, it's It good looks have. quite sturdy yes. and quite well-made. Yes. Like a blacksmith. A well-cast Took some cauldron. serious pride in that cauldron. Ah. After a girl gets her witch period, she'll love this <laughs> gift. Yes. Um, she can put her pens in it. <laughs> she, she'll put her mighty pens in it. Uh, Zelda tries to, like, ease into the whole discussion of, like, there are two realms, the natural and the supernatural, and he'll just like, yeah, you're a witch. Sabrina, we have something to tell you. You see, there are two realms, the natural and the supernatural, and it turns out that the immutable laws of You're physics- a witch. <laughs> what do you mean I'm a witch? You're a witch. <gasps> now, you're not alone. I'm a witch, Hilda's a witch, your father's a witch. And I suppose my mom's a witch, too. I always thought so. Actually, your mom's mortal. You see, that's why you're here, so that we can teach you to use your magic. You know, for a second there, you almost made me forget about my first day of school. Thanks. (laughs) That's what she does. The same way you'd be like, yeah, you're a bitch. Like, you're a bitch. Witch, please. (laughs) Um, Get ready for us to use, like, witch in lieu of bitch in a lot of jokes. It's going to happen this whole series, so get used to it. Badass witch. And she, yeah, she Wait. just says, you're a witch, your whole family's a witch, and uh, get used to it, basically. <laughs> you're a witch. Your, your whole family your whole is collectively one witch. witch. Uh, well, I think it's funny that they tell her over breakfast, because yeah. that is literally the worst way to be told any bad news, or yeah. any... She doesn't even eat breakfast. Any unusual news. Like, you don't break life-altering things to people over breakfast. No, that's more of a brunch thing. Like, let her have some coffee. I mean, she's a teenager, but mm-hmm. I'm like, let her have the coffee first. Let her have some Fanta. Because kids drank, like, soda in the morning in the 90s and nobody cared. She drank her milk. She did. She was the perfect little witch. Yeah, of course, Sabrina doesn't believe her. And just like, well, gotta get to school because I'm going to be late. Definitely not a witch, though. And she goes. And uh, Salem follows follows her out and, like, sits on a little ledge for the scene to close. And, and Salem's like, oh, you have no idea how crazy your family is. And we get that Nick Bacay voice for the first time. Yep. Yeah. Really good voice. Like it sounds like it's coming through like a tin can or something. Yeah. Like the 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 audio quality was not very good in that scene. Let's take a listen. My aunts try hard, but you have to admit they're pretty weird. You have no idea. I agree. It was not <laughs> very good. Um, perfect. Good job, Al. Good job. And. Uh, also, it should be said, if we're talking about poor quality, nice animatronic cat. I mean... This whole episode really reveals, like, where ABC was trying to save some money. Because, like, eventually the sale... Splashing out on that cauldron was a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> Shouldn't have spent so much money on the fucking cauldron. Uh... Eventually, the cat puppets got really good, or the cat animatronics got really good, and it looked like an actual cat. And But this point, it's just like... All right, we're going to put this black rug over this robot, and we'll put three stitches here. It's, it's just shit. Really bad looking cat. It wasn't the best. It was like they just put a robot inside a stuffed animal. Also, during the scene, we see like Zelda wearing what can only be described as a Stevie Nicks-esque like, wrap. wrap. Yeah. It doesn't look terrible. Because that's what you, when you get out of bed at <laughs> night, and you go to peep yeah. on your pubescent niece you take a wrap you want to look fashionable you want to look like stevie nicks yep 
Zelda was definitely on the edge of 17. I'm sorry for that one. <laughs> Please don't they're, they're going to get much worse Not before ever. they get better. Not ever again. Sabrina arrives at Westbridge High School. What does she do? She spies a handsome young man through the biology door. It's Harvey. He's got nice hair. That was my note. I have Harvey hair on point. Yep. Then the writer of Bridesmaids hits him in the face. It's Paul Feig. He wrote Bridesmaids. He's writing the new Ghostbusters. And he's written other movies that Melissa McCarthy is in. He has a pretty good career. He was also Mr. Pool. That's really the top. I mean, really. I'm never going to remember him as anything else. Not ever. He's also Don't re- even try to make me remember him as anything think else. Think about it. Not once. He's actually really good in this episode, though. I think, like, he, he's... He's a dick. He's Let's a be of- honest. He seems like a bitter teacher who's just really annoyed that he has to be here with teenagers, which is really most of his shtick the whole show. Well, let's listen to some of that first. I'm Mr. Poole. <clears throat> And I know you were hoping I was going to spend the day mispronouncing your names, but instead, let's just jump right into biology, huh? The frog is a cold-blooded vertebrate. As we dissect this amphibian, we'll be looking for the kidneys, the heart, and my lost youth. So if you'll each choose up a lab partner, or I could pair you off by height. Thank you. I think the thing is that He's very good at being the teacher who's, like, a little, like, funny and a little annoying, but is definitely a loser. Like, there's no doubting that he's cool or not cool. Especially in his brown-on-brown-on-brown-on-brown ensemble. And that haircut. It is a bit of a geeky cut. I mean, he should just, like, model himself after Harvey. He should. Like, Like, part right down the middle. Big flowing locks. Let's talk more about Harvey, though. Okay, because eventually... Mr. Poole tells the kids to break up because even though it's the first day of school, they're going to dissect a frog for some reason. I don't know that it's the first day. I feel like I feel like it's, it's supposed, supposed to be. It's supposed to be the first day for Sabrina no, because she's the new girl. I think it's the first day overall because eventually in the next scene, Libby's like, can you believe how young the freshmen look? That's true. Yeah. Science. It's true, but I don't think it should be. <laughs> you guys fucked up on that one. Oh, on that one, not on their fucking four dollar I mean, cats. There were other ones that you fucked up on, but that's one to write in. So when the- you're rebooting, <laughs> well done. Which I'm sure you will, because of our immense popularity. So the kids go to break up into pairs to dissect frogs, and Harvey pulls the smooth move of, hey, "You wanna, you wanna maybe team up or whatever." It's like, I'm, I'm I, I, honestly, seriously, this whole episode that was just beautiful. Thank you. Like so, so impressed the way you got into that character. That, that Harvey yeah. dumb, Harvey dumb. He's not dumb. All right, I think he kind of is. Honestly, if he didn't have nice hair, this would be a terrible episode for him. He's. Okay, let's talk about Harvey, though, because he's, like, the weirdest amalgam of things. Mm -hmm. Like, he's a jock, but he's not a very good jock. So he's popular in that he's a jock, but he's on the the bottom cusp of popularity. And yet he's still kind of a loser. Yep. But he's a popular loser, and he's not smart, but he hangs out with smart people. Yeah. And he's not a good jock, but he hangs out with jock people. Yep. But he's he's got this, like, dopey lovingness like yep. he's just a sweetheart he's the best of the he, he's sorry he's the worst of the best he's not he's a part of everything but he's never the best part of everything but you can't help but like him because because he, he's so nice there's a sincerity there and i think that's a really good job by uh nate richard he, he is kind of doofy and kind of like doe-eyed at points but it's 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 heartwarming you can't help but love him right even if you don't love him you still love him or you can't hate him. But least. Sabrina doesn't get to team up with Harvey. That bitch Libby comes in, asks Harvey to be her partner, and Harvey just says yes, which in all honesty, generally green in the 90s, I don't blame Harvey one bit. Good looking girl. I know you don't like it because she's a bitch. No, it's... Good looking girl. I don't blame her. One more time about Harvey's hair, though, because <laughs> I think it deserves another mention. Yeah. Uh, he has, like, quintessential 90s Hawkeye hair. Yep. Like... Flowy. A little feathered. And, like, a little undone, but still, like... Part down the middle. Like, you just want to run your fingers through it. Like... Yes. They are luscious locks. He's the Jordan Catalano of 
this show. I'm sure that means something to someone. <laughs> I'm sure it means something to a lot of 90s TV fans. I'll, I'll, why not? Yeah, sure it does. Sabrina, though, eventually teams up with... Her hair's okay. <laughs> her, her, hair, her hair is like a six. Sabrina eventually teams up with the other loser from last year, Jenny. Je- Jenny makes just the worst tadpole joke that really like illustrates why she doesn't have any friends. Let's name him Tad. Tadpole. Well done, Jenny. Fuck I off. Mean, she's no owl level jokester, right. but And of course, uh Sabrina illustrating where the frog's heart is by pointing inadvertently brings the frog well, to life. She does say, I wish I could bring him back. Yeah. That's like foreshadowing to like three seconds later. Okay. Then Yes. Take it what happens next, Chris? Comes the best fucking line of the whole fucking show. Look! Tad's alive! How'd that happen? <laughs> it's Frankenfrog! Hey! <laughs> Mr. Pole, ours is still kicking! <laughs> oh, Mike from Cadaver Shack's gonna hear from me. Mike from Cadaver Shack is going to hear from me. <laughs> Did you really like that? Oh my god, first of all. What the fuck? There's a cadaver shack. Yes. Who is this Mike? What kind of cadavers does he carry? I, Where I, can you procure them? I imagine he's like a surly bald man. Like a balding, like chubby guy. Who just ha- who, whose like job it is to go into the woods and club animals. How is that not the most terrifying idea? Better like y- that deserves... Mike from Cadaver Shack deserves his own show. I say, better yet. How is that not a spin-off? <laughs> I mean, really. Like shacking up with it, mike that's gonna be like the next installment of american horror story <laughs> mike Cadaver from Shack. Cadaver Shack. <laughs> jessica lang plays mike <laughs> she, she does the hans gruber voice again for no reason and uh what's his name is it nate peters what's his name evan peters evan peters plays uh mr pool <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Unsuspecting Mr. Poole, who uh, just wants some cadavers for his class, just but ends up frogs. with a whole lot more. And en- en- ends up in like a bloody face situation. We now go to the teenage girl's bathroom. Stephen Collins again, very interested. Uh, Libby and too her- soon now. <laughs> so I did the joke too like twenty soon. minutes ago. I know it's too soon. <laughs> Libby and her friends are talking about some shit, like how young the freshmen look, which is just which is a like, stupid line. No, but it's like the most. It's a filler line. It, no, but it's so obviously something people would say that it's just like, it's a throwaway line. Yeah, it, it's put there to just give it's her like, something to say. Oh, it's really cloudy today. Yep. Boy, this water sure is liquid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, it certainly is, Libby. Uh, Sabrina walks in to wash the frog juice off her hands, and Libby gets the first punch in. She's like, if you stanky, don't blame that frog. <laughs> Well said. (laughs) Let's hear what Libby said specifically. May we help you? I just wanted to wash my hands, you know, frog juice. Hmm. You know, if you stink, I'm not sure it's fair to blame the frog. (laughs) What a fucking burn. Honestly, Jesus, like, Sabrina, why don't you conjure some fucking ointment for that burn? (laughs) Oh. Bam. Yep. I'm not going to drop the mic because I actually need it for the rest of the show. She's going to conjure a Band-Aid. That's right. <laughs> conjure some aloe vera. <laughs> References. Okay. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm, I really apologize for our jokes. Uh, Sabrina then gives Libby like a fuck off face and like a talk to the hand motion when, uh, when Libby turns her back. And this somehow causes Libby to like stroke out and just like start putting makeup on her face like she's like a crazy lady. Like a lady who's gone crazy in like a 40s movie. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I can't even put makeup on anymore. I must be pretty. Precisely. Yeah, no. But the worst part of that whole scene is she's like going nuts and putting just like lipstick all over her face. But she's freaking out at the same time. She is freaking out. And her friends are just standing there doing nothing. Because what are they supposed to do, Al? Uh, Libby. She's just acting weird. To them, she's just acting weird. Bitch just being Libby. Yeah, but really, it's like, Libby, are you okay? That's what you do. If my, if, if, if we were in the bathroom together. We wouldn't be in the South because men and women can't go to the bathroom at the same time. Um, if we were in the bathroom together and you just start going nuts, putting on like lipstick on your face. I'd be like, as happens. <laughs> as you are prone to do. Uh, I would ask you if you were okay and maybe wanted to you know, go with more of a neutral shade. 
Chris, I don't think that red is the right shade for you. Chris, you you being uh, in part of a beauty blogger, uh -huh. what did you think of her application of this makeup? I think it was shoddy yeah. at best. Miss the lips a lot. Yeah. I was looking for something a little more brown, you know? But That's true, very of the time. It was it was more of a mauve. Also, which is also of the time. We get a weird line here where like Libby says gives the best fuck off line ever. And then Sabrina's like, well, at least I don't splash on cologne of somebody I dated last year to remind me of him. Yeah. And and Libby's, pro you know, accurately like, how do you know that? And Sabrina's like, I don't know. Yeah. And then we never hear about that again. Does Sabrina have magic tele telekinetic powers or telepathy powers that are never touched on again? How does she know that? Maybe they are touched on again. Not what I, I know. know of. Well, but I think it's more of a she her her powers aren't being controlled so it's whatever gets pulled in gets pulled in yeah. whatever gets done gets done and it's just one of those you know one look at all the elements. strange things happening yeah really that's what it is yeah sabrina also gets to smell you later in there yeah so which that's her line right i'm, I'm trying to remember and i'm like yeah no it's first her line and then we hear it again later oh libby yeah, yeah she gets that... her back uh, but uh, honestly at this point check the scoreboard it's libby one sabrina nothing well Okay, let's talk about this again, though. Because what? what the fuck, Libby? Yeah. Like, what high school girl says, may I help you? Yeah. But see, that, that's what I like about Jenna Lee Green's performance is, like, it's really fucking bitchy, but there's, like, a calmness to her where it's, like, she's just this way all the time that it's so second nature to this character. Like, she doesn't even have to try to be a bitch. Bitch just exudes from her. I get it, but at the same time, I'm like... Between your, you know, demeanor and your jaunty neck scarf, yeah. you're, oh. you're totally going to get that hotel concierge, concierge, concierge I'm position. keeping all three in. No. They're all staying no, in. No, let me say it again. Uh, she, no, no, I was going to say, I thought you were going to say that in, uh, with her demeanor and her neck scarf, like, boss on both accounts nailed it no. twice heck of no, a neck scarf she's not a teenager i don't know what the fuck she is but okay that, then then uh sabrina gets home oh, after her also, first day wait wait yeah saying freak repeatedly is not a good burn i'm sorry um, she needs to step it up i i, I don't know like telling her to use the freak bathroom freak, freak. she's gonna do it a lot more in, in the run of this series I, I know but why do you why is that such a burn i would have loved it if like she had come back on the finale of like the series finale and was just like oh here's your bouquet freak like she's <laughs> super nice <laughs> that's right hey, freak. it was a compliment the whole time she just no. misconstrued it all right so sabrina returns for home from her first day of school to a surprise party yay salem's wearing a hat and her which is cute which is very and the cute. real cat it not, is not the weird puppet thing <laughs> it's just a little scary that's scary <laughs> Not only does she get a cake, which is very nice sitting up there on the table, she also gets a gift from her dad, a big magic book, or rather just a big book because she doesn't know it's magic yet. She opens it, and what does she see? A photo of her dad. Of course, she thinks for some reason that this is like a Hallmark card, she says. Like, yeah. Oh, Hallmark's gone really high tech. Didn't find that funny at all, but whatever. Mm, it was it's the 90s. Swing and a miss there. Uh, Humor Sabrina. was different. Uh, it was a simpler time, Al. Yeah, and then a la Harry Potter, or maybe maybe Harry Potter stole this from her, from them. Yeah, because Harry Potter was after. That's true. Which is what I said. But wait, was, was the book written after? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, so uh, J.K. Rowling just a, a what time? Thief. Well, um, what September ninety six. Hmm. You know what? Let's just play it safe and call J.K. Rowling a thief. Yes. What a thief. Um. Her father, a picture of her father starts talking to her through this book, and she somehow still doesn't believe what her aunts told her, which is that she's a witch. And then her father becomes a massive asshole because he yells at Hilda and Zelda for not telling Sabrina that she's a witch, even though they already did. And the whole time in the back of my head, I'm just thinking, listen, asshole. I called him an asshole in my head. You drop your daughter off to your sisters to to make her live with them, and they're taking care of her out of the goodness of their hearts, and you're just yelling at them because they haven't fulfilled your requirement of telling her she's a witch, even though they actually did? I never really liked the character of Edward, the, the father. Chris, what did you think of Edward? I just, no, I was like, 
Burton. Yeah. I just thought his delivery was really weird. Like, he says, uh, I'm just in another realm. Yeah. Like, you would say, it's not you, it's me. It was really awkward and just Pouty. He was not uh, right. Fun fact, the, 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 the actor who plays Edward, uh, Robbie Benson, is also the director of this episode. How nice for him. Yeah. Although, not a great actor. Um, he still tells her, but you're a witch, you're special, and then she doesn't believe him still. and But she does start to believe him, however, when Salem says, can I finish my milk, when she tells Salem to follow her to her room. Again, a, a, more good Nick McKay acting here, but it's still very, like, it's, it's, it's not funny at all, it's just like, casual, like, can I finish my milk? No, no, I don't know what that was. That was not Nick. Are you okay. telling me that? But that's not like the cadence. Okay. Yes, but it wasn't right. I'll put it in, and we'll let the fans decide. I assume they're fans of mine by now. Can you wait till I finish my milk? <laughs> Spot on. Anyway, uh -huh. uh, the book follows her to her room. Wait. Yeah. Quick flashback to when everyone wanted things from the Gap. Oh, it's true. We do get a Gap reference here. Yeah. Um, and you wanted something from the Gap. Yep. That was a spot on. That was not Zelda. First of all. Don't even start. Zelda is like here now. <laughs> the way Absolutely. Uh, the book follows her to a room floating, which I like. I think that was a really good effect. Like the floating book effect. Mm -hmm. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. Um, <laughs> and... You're easily pleased. Edward has a very frank discussion with her daughter, which I think is actually a really nice with her scene. Daughter? With his daughter, thank you. A uh, really nice scene where they talk about how she just wants to be normal and accepted, but she's special and she can't get away from it. Although, again, he's a bit of an asshole here because he just casually breaks the news to her that she can't see her mother for two years, and if she does, she'll turn her mom into a ball of wax. What the fuck? Why a ball of wax? Um, Tell me, please. It's the witch's council's way of, of all the things. stopping people how is from that, marrying witches. How is that witches. upsetting enough? Like, oh, you'll turn your mom into a ball of wax. It's a, the, <laughs> no, but it's a not ball a good of wax? Thing. Like, who the fuck came up with that? I don't know. Probably, Someone was fucking tripping. Probably on wax something. makers of America. <laughs> they, they, they petitioned to have it be a ball Same of wax. Same person who spent all of their funds on a culture. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're going to buy a ball of wax. And a really nice cauldron. We don't need money for cat puppets, though. No, uh, <laughs> not even a bit. But also, to, to then ease her pain from hearing that she can't see her mother anymore, he tells her that, you know, me and your mom are definitely not getting back together either. So, don't get your hopes up. But chin up. You're a witch. Get used to it. <laughs> and she does. Because then she comes downstairs, and is, comes downstairs and is like, all right, I guess I'm a witch. And then they're like, yeah, you are. Stupid. <laughs> Now turn some oranges into apples. That's right. Chris, what happens here? She does not turn oranges into apples. Nope. Because apples do fucking boring. That's right. She turns them into pineapples. The most delicious fruit known to man. I actually don't like pineapples. They're the best. But she does it a lot. And it, what's funny is after the first time, Caroline Ray makes like a really pithy comment. Like Beth Broderick's character of Zelda is like, oh, that's close. And Caroline Ray's just like, no, it's not. Which it totally is. Okay. There's apple in the name? Yeah, not only is it close, but you're a fucking guardian. Be supportive. Well, you need both. You need the you need a parent to you know <laughs> you a parent to kick lift you, in the you head. up, and then you need a parent to just pop that balloon of gas. Yeah. That your head becomes when you're all. The worst happy. news she gets in the scene, however, is that even though she's a witch, she still has to go to school. Oh no! Wah, wah. And then she starts pointing. Uh, sorry, uh, Caroline she just Ray starts, starts pointing, pointing fucking everything. Everything. There's a cat. There's a person. She's uh, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Reference. Uh, that won't. That probably won't age very well. No, sorry. Caroline Ray points at her, and she's like, "Hey, you're pointing at me." And Caroline Ray gets that terrible joke in about having the safety on. I have the safety on. What an asshole. N no, uh, that was not a playback. <laughs> <laughs> no, shockingly. Uh, Nick McKay does get a good joke in here where uh, Sabrina's like, "Oh, uh, Salem into Apple," and he's like. Well, I think that's enough. Let's just call it off. Go to bed. Yeah. Very good. Put on your nightgown. Yeah. What happens the next day, Chris? The next day, she goes to school. 
mm-hmm. and pulls a Marsha, Marsha, Marsha and gets hit in the head with a football. Things get so much worse for her. She has a pop quiz from a condescending teacher. Oh, God. On the second day of school? Like, what the fuck is That's your right. problem? Oh, they already they already cut open frogs on the first day. That's true. Uh, she gets, she gets you know, footballed in the face by Harvey. Footballed. <laughs> which leads to uh, Jenna Lee Green's character of Libby scoring another point on her when uh, she tells her to live in this world, not just her own. And then throws, like, a little side freak in there as she's walking away. A side freak? <laughs> side freak. <laughs> It gets even worse at lunch because... Her flirting goes awry. Her for- She doesn't even get to flirt no. much because while Jenny and Harvey are talking to her at lunch, who comes over, Chris? That bitch Libby. That's going to be her actual name now. <laughs> the-, the character of that bitch Libby. That bitch Libby. Libby. I know. It's hard to say sometimes. I know. Flirting all mundanely with Harvey. Flirting with Harvey. About and- mailboxes. And really the worst thing that happens to her this whole day is that Jenny tells her just an awful Brad Pitt joke. You remember the joke? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's let our listeners in oh, on it. I? I got a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Brad. Brad who? Brad Pitt. Is there any other Brad worth mentioning? Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him all. Not a good joke. Uh, and, yeah. Brad Garrett. <laughs> Brad Garrett is also worth mentioning. Uh... Libby gets a third point on her at lunch when what does she do? She fucking spills her grape soda on her. Just dumps it right on there after after she invites Harvey to her cool party, but not Sabrina. Everyone cool will be there. And then looks straight at Sabrina and is like, That's all. Accurate representation. Bitch. So, uh, checking the scoreboard here. Libby four, Sabrina zero. Like, she hasn't scored a point on her. What happens next, Chris? Next. This is the big scene of the whole episode. This is probably what people remember the most. Uh, there is some kind of storm. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently the janitor is getting paid to do nothing because there's a shit ton of paper all over the cafeteria that just starts blowing around. That's true. And Sabrina decides to point at the bitch Libby. And she gets some echoey yous. Yo, 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 yo. That's, that's what that means. And turns her into a pineapple, which was a vast improvement. I I liked human Libby, but pineapple Libby is fine also. Um, the that, funny thing is that not plumage because it's not a bird. <laughs> like <laughs> the, that leafy bit on her head is. The, the funny lovely. thing is that uh, when when the whole like stormy bit is happening, there's a fat kid in the background that yells Twister. Yeah. And then the fact that a twister just blew through a school was never mentioned again. It's like one of those things you just drop at the, at the drop of a hat. Someone, like a hat. Someone just opened the window and it got really windy. Yep, a twister came in and then went away. You know. And took Libby away. That's what happens. So just to, again, to check the scoreboard. We're now all tied up, folks. When you, when you change your uh, opponent into a pineapple, you get four points. You get to tie the game. Rules are only slightly less confusing than Quidditch. I wrote, Sabrina gives Libby the finger, per se. <laughs> S- Sabrina <laughs> and fingers turns Libby. In- <laughs> turns her- <laughs> and turns her into a pineapple. Man. Don't you just love that? <laughs> it should also be said uh, that during the scene when Libby, like, transmorphs into a pineapple, which would also be the worst, like, Animorphs book ever, like, Libby the Pineapple, um, Libby's acting, or rather, Jenna Lee Green's acting, is just, like, shaking. Like, uh, 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 turning into a pineapple, and then she turns into a pineapple. She doesn't <laughs> actually say it. How are you supposed to do it? I don't know. Just, like, Add, act really tropical right now. It's like a little flary, like, and bam, pineapple. So, with Pineapple Libby, Sabrina returns home uh, to her aunt's, like, are they eating pineapple at this point? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 they're making pineapple upside down. Yes, cake. another relic of the nineties. Four pineapple upside down cakes. Yep. As Hilda sets down the last one. Yep. And she's like, "Oh my god, I turned Libby into a pineapple." And then Caroline Ray is like, "Well, I'll just kill her then." She goes to chop Libby up. Yeah. At a badass chopping block. That's where the rest of their money went. That's right. <laughs> they got her from the same. The guy set designer who made, the made some terrible choices. <laughs> Honestly, though, as a character. Hilda's awful. Bad jokes, and she tries to kill teenage girls. Worst of both worlds. Zelda, uh, and then Zelda's just like... sounds like you. Kind of. And then Zelda does the much more sane thing of just, like, changing Libby back really easy. 
Really simple. The just, popular girl is not a fruit. That's that's the trick. Yep. Magic trick. Um, <laughs> did you know she used two fingers? She did. She did. It's like a scout salute. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and Sabrina comes in and she's like, it's not just, oh, well, this is after the whole Libby thing. Yeah. So Libby gets turned back, back into a human being. The bitch. bitch. Not back the, the from tropically Libby. fun fruit. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she she tries to pass, uh, Sabrina tries to pass it off as, what are you talking about? You just came over so I could show you something. And she's not buying it because why would she be at the freak's house? That's right. So, she basically threatens her and says, "You're over." I don't know what that was. I'm sorry. Just cut that out. Generally green there. <laughs> she, basically, <laughs> she basically. I'm definitely says, not cutting any of this. Some of it. I'm, I'm gonna ruin you. I'm. No one's gonna want to talk yeah. to you. Everyone's gonna know what a freak you are. And, and Sabri- walks and out. Of course, naturally, Sabrina's very sad. And in a very high school way, yeah. she says, "It's not just over." It's over, over. That's right. It's over. My life is over. I mean, it's not just over. It's over, over. Oh, stop. Libby can't hurt you. She's just one person with a crazy story. She's a cheerleader. Nobody has more credibility. She's the cheerleader. No one has more credibility. Period. Um exclamation point lucky for sabrina though she discovers that even though earlier in the episode her aunts told her that she can't change uh, she can't go back in time when she was late for school she's not share she can't turn back time she can't but many witches can for some reason it's a union thing apparently i fucking hate that joke fucking unions i i, I much prefer the heisenberg uncertainty principle joke it took me a while to get that one. Oh, yeah? I was just like, oh, that's a weird tidbit to throw in there. And then I was like, oh, I get it. It's either at eight or at ten. I literally wrote, I'm n- nobody but me laughed at that joke. <laughs> that is accurate. It's pretty good. Pretty good joke. Um, so Hilda and Zelda reveal that the witch's council in the other realm have the ability to change back time, but you have to go to them and make an appeal. And wouldn't you know it, Hilda, the murderer dated the head of the council drell so they tell sabrina to go to drell pitch her story about why she needs time changed backwards but not to stare at his mole yep this is a joke i didn't get uh (laughs) also it's important that even though it's light years away or thousands of light years away ten thousand there's a shortcut through the linen closet yes which is where you would keep all of your Epic fucking Black shit. holes and shit. It is a good idea, though. Like, It's got to be something mundane. Yeah. It, it bar- it's, the pantry would work. It Except takes their it, pantry is like a magical pantry. It takes it from the, the, um, the wine and the witch in the wardrobe, of course. You know, going through, hopping in, popping out, hanging out. Yeah. She's going to keep going? <laughs> yeah. She's just waiting for you to... All finish. right. So S- Sabrina gets to the other realm gets to the witch's council. What happens next, Chris? Let's just talk about what we see when we get there. It is a feast for the eyes, to say the least. So, if you could picture a bad high school play of a dream sequence, that is what the witch's council's chambers would look like. Yep. It's clouds everywhere. Literally. On the floor. Stage-like curtains. With giant fucking tassels. Mm -hmm. Like, where is your money going? (laughs) Cauldron, man. Tassels are us is where your money is going. But but maybe... Mike's tassel hut. Maybe the more insane thing is who's on the witch's council? Well... It's Penn and Teller and the woman from Blondie. That's actually who it is. It's Penn Gillette. Debbie Harry. It's Teller and it's Debbie Harry. What the hell? Who is your casting director? <laughs> that's that's where the money went. Casting, <laughs> it's but I, I will give I will give Penjuet this much. He does a great job as Drell throughout the whole run of the series. Yeah, he he embodies that character. It's just so many little things. Like, yep. why is there a giant fucking apple? Good question. Because it's like why, a why does she sequence. give why does she give Teller a washcloth and why does he start to eat it? 
Why do they need to feed the candle? Why do they need to feed the candle? Another fair question. But why the fuck is it covered, the table covered in vines? It's just all little elements that they thought would make it seem like mystical or otherworldly or like a dream. And it's just like. It looks like the back room of a prop house. No, it's like a cheap representation of what it would be. It's literally, we had no budget. I let my teenage daughter come up with an idea of what the other realm should look like. She said a lot about. She said big apples and magicians. I gave her fifty (laughs) dollars, and she came back with a big cauldron. Um, Sabrina bursts into the witches' council, tells them her issue. They don't want to hear it because she doesn't have an appointment. They let her speak anyway. Pendulette just flatly denies her and is like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Denied. They they let they hear her out again. Um, she tells him about all the bad things that happened. Oh, she got on the bad side of Libby. And Libby is really powerful, as Chris illustrated perfectly before. Uh, it's so awful, you know. And, and Penjolette even, at one point, is like, jeez, the problems of teenage girls. They're so important. Which I think accurately captured my feelings at this point. It's like, listen, you're still in the positive overall because you're a witch. You have magical powers. You can, you, you'll be cool. Don't worry. Nobody's going to believe the crazy girl who says you turned her into a pineapple and then turned her back. Or will they? No one has more credibility. <laughs> Stop saying. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so they tell Sabrina, Penjoet does, to go back to her house and they'll let her know when they make their decision. Mm-hmm. She goes back home and I thought maybe the most <laughs> touching scene in a, in a weird way uh, she's in bed and she's talking with Salem about whether or not he thinks the witch's trial, uh, the, rather the witch's council, will rule uh, in her favor. Will rule in her favor. It's really like sad because he tells her all about how they sentenced him to be a cat and how he doesn't even have like the basic experiences of a human being anymore, and he he misses such basic things like dancing, like dancing, like playing squash. It's like. A, a talking cat shouldn't be this poignant. Al was crying. I thought it was really touching. Salem, do you think the council grant the time reversal? I'm the wrong witch to ask. They weren't very lenient with me. Sentenced to a hundred years as a cat. And for what? I don't know. For what? Oh, like any young kid, I dreamed of world domination. Of course, they really crack down when you act upon it. Wow. No wonder you're so possessive of the sofa. Mmm. It would have been glorious. Me, as the firm but just emperor of Earth. Trust me, being a house pet wasn't even plan B. Come on, it's not that bad. You take 5,000 naps a day. I can't go dancing. I can't play squash. The sound of the can opener is the only thing that makes me feel truly alive. Salem, would you like your rubber mouse? Please. It's a depth of character in terms of Salem that you never really see again much. You kind of see it like later on when you find out he has a daughter and he doesn't want his daughter to find out that he is a cat. Um, what about the episode when he has a girlfriend? Yeah. That one or when his mother comes to visit. A lot of these episodes are just him hiding the fact that he's a cat. Yep. Uh he tells her, Listen, probably not gonna happen, don't get your hopes up. What happens the next morning, Chris? The next morning, Sabrina gets a message from the Witches' Council. Through the toaster. Via the toaster. As you would. And she has to make sure she doesn't burn herself on. That's right. Did you not like that touch? I did. (laughs) Of course, course, what happens? She gets denied. Yeah. Once again. In a condescending voice. And then he laughs at her, too. Yeah, which was, you know, really the icing on the cake. That's right. But, uh, wh- but what happens when she goes to school? For some reason, the Witches' Council changed their mind. Because everything that she did wrong the day before, she gets to do right. She she aces the quiz. Although She knows the answer to that uh, Brad Pitt joke. Which she was, does. You know. That's how we discovered that time was changed backwards. I thought that w- what was funny, though, was even though she aced the quiz, the the history teacher is still condescending to her. Like, no, I mean, I don't think she's condescending. I think she's like, 
praising but in like such an overdone way that mm-hmm. it's just like oh you did such a good job like what you would say to like a child yeah it's weird even though she's 16 um of course because she was floating before sweet 16 she catches the football and everybody cheers instead of getting football um first of all let's talk about that yeah bitch was smirking before she caught it like yeah. look how cool i am bitches that, that works for the character though because she knows it's coming yeah but i mean seriously that that smirk needs to be like a gif and i thought the the best performance in this whole scene is uh nate richard who plays harvey mm-hmm. who was able to perfectly replicate his uninterested can i sit here from earlier in the episode uh, when they're at lunch it's yeah. hilarious it's like the first time i noted that man is this guy fucking low energy and then somehow he's able to not only get these two attractive girls to let him sit with them but oh yeah super attractive as an actor he's then able to replicate this lack of interest in what he's saying when time gets changed backwards i thought it was oddly impressive everything goes well Mm -hmm. sabrina cuts them off before they get into too much uh mailbox talk and Asks Harvey to go watch a movie with him and Jenny on the weekend, right before Libby comes over. That's right. And mentions her party, which now Harvey, alas, cannot go to. Mm-hmm. And, and and Sabrina gets a good wine in here. Bubble burst. Bubble burst. <laughs> Damn, then, like she is she is wrecking life this day. Yeah, and she's so fucking smirky about <laughs> it. Like she, she wants everybody to know she's got knows what's no going on. chill. It's just like all about like. Oh, I'm a badass bitch, and I know it. Yep. And, and, and topper cherry on the on the ice cream cone. What happens, Chris? Libby tries to spill her drink on her, cause you know she's a bitch and all. As bitches do. And Sabrina points her finger at it, and it just squirts up all on her. Sabrina, <laughs> Sabrina fingers <laughs> Libby, and she turns around and squirts. And it squirts. Yeah. Yep. Like that is the thing, and that, she runs away. The funny thing is, like every all of her friends, Harvey, Harvey and Jenny are watching, and this no one is, thinks that it's weird. That's the thing that glass just defied physics. It turned 180 degrees and then squirt out. I mean, they're not doing very well in biology, so they obviously haven't gotten to physics yet. That is true. She then runs home and is like, "Oh, I'm super happy. I love being a witch. I'm gonna go talk to the cat." Oh no, uh, something like. Um, I'm normal again. Yeah, I'm normal. I'm gonna go tell the cat. Yeah, which yeah, yeah that's the what episode, normal people do. That's basically I, I that's talk what to, I do. I talk I to mean, my cat all the fucking time. Kitty, get down from there is mostly what I say. <laughs> um, and the episode closes with her getting more milk and her and Salem talking about Eurasia. You skipped a very crucial part. I did not. You did though. What did I skip? You skipped when she goes upstairs. Hilda and Zelda have a <laughs> groundbreaking conversation. Let's put that whole conversation in right here. <laughs> Teens. What about them? Just in general. What the fuck? Most awkward moment ever. Like, like so this is this is They clearly l- saved money on editing. Legitimately what I think happened was that that wasn't really supposed to air. Mm-hmm. It was a placeholder for something witty that they hadn't come up with yet. Yeah. And they just forgot to edit it out. <laughs> like they were, they, like a, a magical like some pineapple joke, upside down cake was going to appear. Some joke about, you know, how witches are awesome and, oh, witch versus teenager. Mm-hmm. Which I guess we've got to give her hex education. Just came up with that one. Now that you just fingered Libby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goddamn. Uh, too much um but yeah no it was awful it was literally the worst most awkward moment so bad and that's basically where the episode ends uh chris what did you think of the overall episode as a single story and as it set up the overall season and series i think it was really good for establishing everything i mean you get to understand you know how the role she plays at school Mm -hmm. You get to meet her inner circle and the people she's going to be dealing with, who are antagonists, uh, her aunts, and and you get to understand a little bit about the way uh, that realm and and you know the witch hierarchy works. Yep. Which is important because in a lot of those early episodes, she would do something and then she'd have to hear from the witches' council, or you know there would be some weird rule that she wasn't up on because she didn't read her fucking magic book. And she'd have to go check the magic book. or So I think it, it was really good in terms of 
letting us know get to know the characters and getting an understanding for who Sabrina is and where she's going to go. It's not like it's the most magic packed episode. No. But I think it's as you said, it's a good scene setter, you know. It, yeah. it gets you in it's a good introductory uh episode and the magic that is used is used effectively. You know, it, it progresses the story. Yeah. It's important to the overall episode. It, there, nothing was really a throwaway except for that last scene. Yeah. <laughs> that was just <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, that was time filler if I've seen anything. Yeah, but I feel like everything really it wasn't this wasn't about particularly being interesting or mm-hmm. it was more about just setting the scene and getting to know the characters. Yeah. Which I think it did well. If you had to rank it on my patented scale, the this good I feel scale, that's what you'd be saying. Uh T G I F T G I F scale. Those, those- uh, listeners out there who haven't put that together it is pretty why. complicated i'm not gonna lie i mean it's... i would probably if you hadn't told me earlier i probably wouldn't have I know. gotten it <laughs> all right so here's how the scale works folks because uh, you might not have gotten it yet um we go from one to five and you have to represent this episode as a tgif show from bottom to top is it a you wish which is the bottom of the bottom terrible show genie that was the genie one which i don't is, even remember that one it was bad it, it, next i can guess what is next okay it's the the angel one it's teen angel teen, teen angel is like a number two out he of five. ate a bad burger and died <laughs> that was basically it uh, and then he haunted his best friend a three out of five is a hanging with mr cooper oh that was a good show i fucking love that show uh four out of five is like a family matters that was i mean i had a steve urkel doll you did growing up you pulled the string and he said did i do that you did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a five out of five is a Boy Meets World. I mean, I don't know about your rating scale. But Listen, the, it, it, Boy Meets World was undoubtedly the best non-Sabrina TGIF show. If you love it so much, why don't you go podcast about there it? There are literally like four of them. Okay. <laughs> That's a good point. You I just want to be a big fish in a small pond. Big fish in an ocean. That's a comeback. No. What? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Makes sense. Chris, rate, I don't think you come understand on. how this rate, works. Rate Sabrina season one episode one pilot on my patented TGIF scale. Okay, but we're rating it on like visual appeal. The overall collective of an episode. How good is it? How entertaining is it as an episode? I mean, because the story is bargain basement, you know. It's not super exciting. I can't none, even none... remember what it is. <laughs> I can't none... remember what the We just went was. over it for an hour. <laughs> no, no. I can't even remember what the oh, number... Oh, sorry. Uh, here, you can look what's, at it. What's three? From bottom to... T- it's a hanging with Mr. Cooper. It's a hanging with Mr. Cooper. In my yeah, opinion. I would agree. Yeah. It's it's good. Not great. Not bad. Uh, but really a, a place setter for good things to come in the future. Yeah. I think in terms of how well it sets up things, I think it's it's maybe family matters but in terms of like overall watch appeal Mm -hmm. it's like hang on mr Mr. cooper Cooper. yeah i agree uh now there's one more bit of business to handle chris yeah there's a special award i want to give out every week to every week every week every episode of sabrina the teenage witch uh it'll be this show's weekly prize for an episode's biggest fashion flop It'll be called the Back of the Linen Closet Award, and the way it'll work is we will highlight some of the most hideous outfits of the 90s as featured on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Chris, if you had to, I'm, I'm going to give you some options, but if you had to pick one particularly bad outfit or piece of clothing in this episode that really stuck out, what was it? I mean, okay, there are some very quintessential 90s outfits, like... Sabrina's outfits look like they came straight from Delia's. Yeah, oh, a lot of them, yeah. Those pants. Or Mandy's. Those pants at the end, like, those checkered pants, those mm-hmm. were like, oh, those button-down collared shirts with the short sleeves. I definitely had one with, like, <laughs> snaps. For whatever reason, polyester was big in the 90s as well, and those, like, polyester-printed, like, button-up shirts were, like, really popular. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, and you only get a glimpse of it, but it really does have to go to the jacket that looks like fall threw up upon it. It is. Uh, you know what? I probably am going to agree with you. Although I do want to give an honorable mention to um, that hideous, hideous dress Hilda is wearing. The one that looks like granny wallpaper. It looks like she is Thelma and or Louise. Like she comes, she's wearing it when Sabrina comes down uh, b- before 
she they, finds out about the witch's council. Yes, yeah. but but after she went to the witch's council, and it's basically like a black dress with like flower bouquets all over it. Yeah. It is with so puffed ugly. Sleeves. It's with no sleeves. No, no, no. They're puffed. Puffed they sleeves. Puffed at the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. My mistake. It is fucking hideous. Honestly, it's the only words that can be used it's, to describe it. It's grandmotherly wallpaper. I, I think your point about the 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 green and brown leather jacket scaled leather jacket there are scales on the leather jacket or i think it's a leather suede combo yeah the, the, i think the brown is suede she sabrina is actually smart because hilda hands it to her to go to school even though she knows that she you know time wasn't changed or whatever yeah. sabrina is never actually seen wearing it not in this episode she's only seen carrying it and that shows melissa joan hart is a little more fashionable than everybody else would say because she knows not to put on this disgusting jacket really putrid it's like if it's like if you turned one of uh what's his name i was going to say it's like if you took a perfectly good green jacket but th that alone is like no. hard to do it's if you took one of bill cosby's sweaters but wanted to make a suede leather jacket version like, it's on that level of tackiness. It is really bad. I, I'm, I'm going to stop using synonyms and Wait, just tell why? you. Why is it scaled? Why? Why are there scales? Why are there scales two colors instead of the logical one color? I mean, that was a popular thing. Like, bags that were, like, suede and leather that had, like, that patchwork effect. Mm -hmm. But this is, like, legit scales. Real, like, real bad. I want to look like a suede fish. There you go. It goes into the back of the linen closet. The pantheon Never to be seen again. Of hideous clothing. I think that she uses it again. I really episodes. hope not, because uh, otherwise we've got a ringer here. Or it's like every week by default, it's going to have to win the award. There might be some other ones. There you go, folks. Uh, before we leave here today, I want to let Chris plug all her shit. Uh, Chris, tell us about ChrisConquers.com. What's going on over there? Of course, you do not only romance novel reviews, but some really in depth and really good beauty product reviews. Yeah. Uh, that. Yeah, I have a beauty romance novel combo blog. Um, there's a bit of lifestyle, a bit... There's not that much, like, fashion stuff because I'm too lazy to take photos of myself a lot of wearing things. Reviews, it's a lot of makeup, um, skincare, beauty stuff, uh, and straight-up book reviews. And pretty much those books are all romance because that's what I like and I don't give a fuck. Talk about what you like. That's, so, why, I'm having a, that's why I host a podcast about Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah. You can follow Chris not only by visiting her at chrisconquers.com, but on Twitter at chrisconquers, on Instagram at chrisconquers. Yeah, I like to keep things all at the same level. Very good. Awesome. Guess. That level is awesome. If you're listening to us, one, thank you for listening to our first episode of Sabrina's well, Witch Trials. Your first episode. Ours yeah. as a podcast. It's, you can take It's yours. Alex you Araujo presents Sabrina's <laughs> Witch Trials, patented Alex Araujo, Inc., at the Alex Araujo patent pending, everywhere. Patent pending. Twitter and Instagram at the, at the Alex Araujo. I can't pronounce my own name. I've talked so because long. Because he thinks he's hot shit. So. If you want to follow the podcast on Twitter at Sabrina Podcast. On Facebook. Facebook.com Facebook slash Sabrina's Witch Trials. On SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com slash Sabrina's Witch Trials. Find us on iTunes or your favorite podcast app by just searching for Sabrina's Witch Trials. You want them all? Follow us everywhere you can. Do it twice. Listen to us four times. And really, most importantly, <laughs> tell your friends if you liked us. I really hope you did because this is a passion project of mine. Uh, tell your friends that there's this awesome new podcast about Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And, where people know, just say stupid things. Where people you know, talk about fingering for an hour. Yeah. That's basically what happened. Um, please do. And because, cauldrons. Sex cauldrons. And if you really want to just make me a super happy guy which people will tell you i'm really not uh <laughs> give us give us a review in either itunes or soundcloud uh or just you know give us some uh feedback on twitter any of that would be just excellent because uh, feedback is always nice it is it's nice to hear that people are interested and people are listening yeah even so if they hate you next week i will have a, a different guest i think i know who i have for next week but i have to confirm plans but we'll be talking about bunt Friday, a very special episode two of Sabrina Teenage Witch, where, where 
cakes are involved, sprinkles are involved, and maybe some love? What? Kissing? Lies? <laughs> Possibly? How many more words can you say in that way? Fingering? <laughs> all right. So that, that'll do it all for... Uh, That'll do it for this week on Sabrina's Witch Trials. Until next time, we will see you in the other realm. Smell you later. <laughs> <laughs>